This is Sarah Wilkinson from Humber College and the University of Guelph Humber. And in this first video of the Skeletal Muscle series, I'm going to be looking at muscle features. After this video, I'm going to cover the neuromuscular junction, the sliding filament theory of muscle contraction, and different types of contractions. So let's jump right in. Tendons connect skeletal muscles to bones. So on the left diagram here, you can see we have the Achilles tendon of the lower leg, which is going to connect skeletal muscle to the bone. And over here, as an example, we've got the biceps brachii muscle, which is going to be connected to its bone by its tendon. Tendons are made of connective tissue. Let's have a look at the skeletal muscle. As you can see here, we have the tendon and the skeletal muscle. Within the skeletal muscle tissue, there's going to be many muscle fascicles. Here you can see one muscle fascicle. And if we blow it up, this is an enlarged muscle fascicle. Let's look a little deeper. So let's blow up our muscle fascicle. And now you can see muscle fascicles are going to contain bundles of muscle fibers. This is an individual muscle fiber and it's bundled. Muscle fibers are the cell of skeletal muscles. Let's take a little closer look at our muscle fiber, which is our skeletal muscle cell. Just like any other cell, there is a plasma membrane. However, in the skeletal muscle, we call it the sarcolemma. Anything that starts with sarco generally refers to skeletal muscle. The cytoplasm will be called sarcoplasm. And the smooth endoplasmic reticulum will be called the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which we'll get to later. There's all the typical organelles that you would find in other cells, such as mitochondria, nuclei, ribosomes, etc. And finally, your muscle fiber is going to be packed full of myofibrils. Let's take a closer look at our myofibrils contained within the muscle fiber. So again, this is our skeletal muscle cell. Here we've got our myofibril. And I've blown it up for you. So what myofibrils are, are bundles of protein filaments, so long proteins. And they're going to be responsible for contraction. So some of the proteins contained within the myofibril include a protein called actin, which you can see here in green, and a protein called myosin, which you can see sort of in this burgundy purple. And again, let's blow this up a little bit. So if we look here at our myofibril and zoom in on something we called a sarcomere. Again, we've got our actin in green and our myosin here in our purple. And what's gonna happen, which I'm not gonna cover in this video, it's gonna be in another one. Essentially, these sarcomeres, so this is a full sarcomere, are going to contract. So again, we have our resting length sarcomere, which can contract. Now we have not just one sarcomere. There's many, many, many sarcomeres all lined up. And when all the sarcomeres are shortening, we have a contraction. Now, one thing you can notice here is that there's parts where myosin and actin overlap. And there's parts where there's just actin and there's just myosin. So this fact is going to give us the distinct appearance of skeletal muscle. And we call this appearance striations. That is, there's going to be darker bands when we stain it and lighter bands where there's no overlap. Here you can see real skeletal muscle fibers. And if I blow this up a little bit, is that there's sort of darker bands, and this is where myosin and actin overlap. 
And there's lighter bands where you have only one of the protein folds. And so this is a distinct feature of skeletal muscle, and we call this striation. In addition to myosin and actin, which are your classic proteins involved in contraction, we have two other proteins we'll discuss in future videos. This light orange protein is called troponin, and it's going to be really important because it's going to bind to calcium, so that will come up later on. And our other important protein we're going to talk about is tropomyosin. And tropomyosin covers a really important part of actin when the muscle is at rest. This active site on actin is covered by tropomyosin. During contraction, what's going to happen is that the tropomyosin is going to move because troponin moves it so that these active sites on actin can open up so that myosin can bind. Don't worry if you don't have this all now, I'm going to cover this in much more detail in future videos. All you need to know for now is the proteins involved in muscle contraction. For those more advanced students of muscle physiology, you'll know that there are more proteins involved in contraction than what I've covered here. But for the basics, we're going to cover myosin, actin, troponin, and tropomyosin. Let's expand back up again. So we've been so far looking at one individual sarcomere. What we've stripped away in this diagram is all the organelles that cover these myofibrils. So I'm going to put those back on right now. Here, we have some additional organelles that were originally stripped away to look at our sarcomere. And we're going to cover those now. So let's just blow this up. Just to orient you, here is our sarcolemma, which as you recall, that's your plasma membrane. The next organelle we'll talk about is something called the transverse tubule. It's essentially a narrow tube. It starts from the plasma membrane and here's our narrow tube down into the cell. So it's continuous with the sarcolemma, meaning that it's an extension of the plasma membrane that goes deep into the cell. This feature allows an action potential to travel from the cell surface into the cell interior. So I've illustrated an action potential with a little star here, and what you can see is the action potential travels across the plasma membrane and down the T-tubule. This will be really important for initiating contraction. Right beside the T-tubule is the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So here you can see we've got the sarcoplasmic reticulum, this network of tubules, and essentially, it's the skeletal muscle smooth endoplasmic reticulum. It surrounds myofibrils, and it's going to store calcium. This will become important later on when we talk about action potentials traveling down the T-tubule and causing the release of calcium from this sarcoplasmic reticulum. So let's review. Tendons connect skeletal muscle to bones. Within skeletal muscles, there are many fascicles. Fascicles contain bundles of muscle fibers, which are the cells. Muscle fibers have many of the typical organelles, including mitochondria, nuclei, endoplasmic reticulum, etc. Within the muscle fiber, there are bundles of myofilaments. And these myofilaments are made up of proteins such as actin, myosin, troponin, and tropomyosin. These proteins give muscle its striated appearance. Finally, we covered that transverse tubules are continuous with the sarcolemma and allow action potentials to travel into the cell. So in this video, I've covered some basic anatomical features of skeletal muscles. In the next video, I'm going to start to talk about this neuromuscular junction, which is the junction between a motor neuron and the skeletal muscle.